Five October. Five p.m. Our meeting for report. Present, Professor Van Helsing, Lord Godalming, Doctor Seward, Mister Quincy Morris, Jonathan Harker, Amina Harker. Doctor Van Helsing described what steps were taken during the day to discover in what boat and whither bound Count Dracula made his escape. As I knew that he wanted to get back to Transylvania, I felt sure that he must go by the Danube mouth, or by somewhere in the Black Sea, since by that way he come. It was a dreary blank that was before us, omne ignotum pro magnifico, and so, with heavy hearts, we start to find that ships leave for the Black Sea last night. He was in sailing ship since Madame Mina tell of sails being set. This not so important as to go in your list of the shipping in the Times, and so we go. The suggestion of my Lord Godalming to your alloids, where are note of all ships that sail, however so small. There we find that only one Black Sea bound ship go out with the tide. She is the Tsarina Catherine, and she sail from Doolittle's wharf for Varna and thence on to other parts and up the Danube. So, said I, this is the ship whereupon is the count. So off we go to do little's wharf, and there we find a man in an office of wood so small that the man look bigger than the office. From him we inquire of the goings of the Tsarina Catherine. He swear much, and he red face and loud of voice, but he good fellow all the same. And when Quincy give him something from his pocket, which crackle as he roll it up, and put it in a so small bag, which he have hid deep in his clothing, he still better fellow and humble servant to us. He come with us and ask many men who are rough and hot. These be better fellows too than they have been no more thirsty. They say much of blood and bloom and of others, which I comprehend not, though I guess what they mean. But nevertheless, they tell us all things which we want to know. They make known to us among them how last afternoon at about five o'clock comes a man so hurry, a tall man, thin and pale, with high nose and teeth so white, and eyes that seem to be burning that he be all in black, except that he have a hat of straw, which suit not him or the time, that he scatter his money in making quick inquiry as to what ship sails for the Black Sea and for where. Some took him to the office and then to the ship, where he will not go aboard but halt at shore, end of gangplank, and ask that the captain come to him. The captain come, when told that he will be pay well, and though he swear much at the first, he agree to term. Then the dead man go, and some one tell him 
the horse and cart can be hired. He go there, and soon he come again, himself driving cart on which is a great box. This he himself left down, to take several to put it on track for the ship. He gave much talk to Captain as to how and where his box is to be placed, but the Captain like it not, and swear at him in many tongues, and tell him that if he like, he can come and see where it shall be, but he say no, that he come not yet, for that he have much to do. Thereupon the captain tell him that he had better be quick with blood, for that his ship will leave the place of blood before the turn of the tide with blood. Then the tin man smile and say that of course he must go when he think fit, but he will be surprised if he go quite so soon. The captain swear again, polyglot, and the tin man make him bow and thank him, and say that he will so far intrude on his kindness as to come aboard before the sailing. Final, the captain, more red than ever, and in more tongues, tell him that he doesn't want no Frenchmen with bloom upon them and also with blood in his ship, with blood on her also, and so, after asking where there might be close at hand the shop where he might purchase ship forms, he departed. No one knew where he went, or bloom and well cared, as they said, for they had something else to think of. Well, with blood again, for it soon became apparent to all that the Tsarina Catherine would not sail as was expected. A thin mist began to creep up from the river, and it grew and grew, till soon a dense fog enveloped the ship and all around her. The captain swore polyglot, very polyglot, polyglot with bloom and blood, but he could do nothing. The water rose and rose, and he began to fear that he would lose the tide altogether. He was in no friendly mood. Then, just at full tide, the tin man came up the gangplank again and asked to see where his box had been stowed. Then the captain replied that he wished that he and his box, old and with much bloom and blood, were in hell. But the tin man did not be offend, and went down with the maid, and saw where it was placed, and came up and stood a while on deck in fog. He must have come off by himself, for none noticed him. Indeed, they thought not of him, for soon the fog began to melt away, and all was clear Again, my friends, of the thirst and the language that was of bloom and blood, laughed, as they told how the captain's spheres exceeded even his visual polyglot, and was more than ever full of picturesque, when on questioning other mariners, who were on movement up and down on the river that hour, he found 
that few of them had seen any of fog at all, except that it lay around the wharf. However, the ship went out on the ebb tide, and was doubtless by morning far down the river mouth. She was, by then, when they told us, well out to sea. And so, uh, my dear Madame Mina, it is that we have to rest for a time, for our enemy is on the sea, with the fog at his command, on his way to the Danube mouth. To sail a ship takes time, go she never so quick. And when we start, we go on land more quick, and we meet him there. Our best hope is to come on him when in the box between sunrise and sunset, for then he can make no struggle, and we may deal with him as we should. There are days for us in which we can make ready our plan. We know all about where he go, for we have seen the owner of the ship, who have shown us invoices and all papers that can be. The box we seek is to be landed in Varna and to be given to an agent, one Aristix, who will dare present his credentials, and so our merchant friend will have done his part. When he ask if there be any wrong, for that so, he can telegraph, and have inquiry made at Varna, we say no, for what is to be done is not for police or of the customs. It must be done by us alone and in our own way. When Dr. Van Helsing had done speaking, I asked him if it were certain that the Count had remained on board the ship. He replied, We have the best proof of that. Your own evidence when in the hypnotic trance this morning. I asked him again if it were really necessary that they should pursue the Count, for, oh, I dread Jonathan leaving me, and I know that he could surely go if the others went. He answered in growing passion, at first quietly. As he went on, however, he grew more angry and more forceful, till in the end, we could not but see wherein was at least some of that personal dominance which made him so long a master amongst men. This it is necessary, 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 for pure sake and the first, and then for the sake of humanity. This monster has done much harm already in the narrow scope where he finds himself, and in the short time when, as yet, he was only as a body groping his so small measure in darkness and not knowing. All this have I told these others. You, my dear Madame Mina, will learn it in the phonograph of my friend John or in that of your husband. I have told them how the measure of leaving his own barren land, barren of peoples, and coming to a new land, where life of man teems till they are like the multitude of standing corn, was the work of centuries where another of the undead, like him, to try to do what he has done, perhaps not all the centuries of the world that have been, or that will be, could aid him. 
with this one. All the forces of nature that are occult and deep and strong must have worked together in some wondrous way. The very place where he have been alive and dead for all these centuries is full of strangeness of the geologic and chemical world. There are deep caverns and fissures that reach none know whither. There have been volcanoes, some of whose openings still send out waters of strange properties, and gases that kill or make to vivify. Doubtless, there is something magnetic or electric in some of these combinations of occult forces, which work for physical life in strange way, and in himself, where from the first some great qualities. In a hard and warlike time, he was celebrate that he have more iron nerve, a more subtle brain, more braver heart than any man. In him, some vital principle have, in strange way, found their utmost. And as his body keep strong and grow and thrive, so his brain grow too. All this without that diabolic aid which is surely to him, for it have to wield to the powers that come from and are symbolic of good. And now, this is what he is to us. He have in fact you. Oh, forgive me, my dear, that I must say such, but it is for good of you that I speak. He, in fact, view in such wise that even if he do no more, view have only to live, to live in your own old sweet way. And so, in time, that which is of man's common lot and with God's sanction shall make view like to him. This must not be. We have sworn together that it must not. Thus are we ministers of God's own wish, that the world and men for whom his son die will not be given over to monsters, whose very existence would defame him. He have allowed us to redeem one soul already, and we go out as the old knights of the cross to redeem more. Like them, we shall travel towards the sunrise, and like them, if we fall, we fall in good cause. He paused and I said, but will not the Count take his rebuff wisely, since he has been driven from England? Will he not avoid it, or the tiger does the village from which he has been haunted? Aha! he said. Your simile of the tiger good for me, and I shall adopt him. Your man-eater, as they of India call the tiger, who has once tasted blood of the human care no more for other prey, but prowl unceasing till he get him. This, that we hunt from our village, is a tiger too, a man-eater, and he never cease to prowl. Nay, in himself he is not one to retire and stay afar. In his life, his living life, he go over the Turkey frontier and attack his enemy on his own ground. He 
be beaten back. But did he stay? No. He come again, and again, and again. Look at his persistence and endurance. With the child brain that was to him, he have long since conceived the idea of coming to a great city. What does he do? He found out the place of all the world must have promised for him. Then he deliberately set himself down to prepare for the task. He found in patience just how is his strength and what are his powers. He studied new tongues. He learned new social life. A new environment of all days, the politic, the law, the finance, the science, the habit of a new land, and the new people who have come to be since he was. His glimpse that he have had, but his appetite only, and in came his desire, nay. It helped him to grow as to his brain, for it all proved to him how right he was at the first in his surmises. He have done this alone, all alone, from a ruined tomb in a forgotten land. What more may he not do when the greater world of thought is open to him? He that can smile at that, as we know him, who can flourish in the midst of diseases that kill off whole peoples. Oh, if such an one was to come from God and not the devil, what a force for good might he not be in this old world of ours. But we are pledged to set the world free. Our toil must be in silence, and our efforts all in secret. For, in this enlightened age, when men believe not even what they see, the doubting of wise men would be his greatest strength. It would be at once his sheet and his armor and his weapons to destroy us, his enemies, who are willing to peril even our own souls for the safety of one we love, for the good of mankind and for the honor and glory of God. After a general discussion, it was determined that for tonight, Nothing be definitely settled. That we should all sleep on the facts and try to think out the proper conclusions. Tomorrow at breakfast, we are to meet again, and, after making our conclusions known to one another, we shall decide on some definite course of action. I feel a wonderful peace and rest tonight. It is as if some haunting presence were removed from me. Perhaps. My surmise was not finished. Could not be. For I caught sight of the mirror of the red mark upon my forehead, and I knew that I was still unclean. <laughs>